Uh, thank you, uh, Sarah, Sajina, Adam, Sam, and Eugene. So, first and foremost, I want to thank the pastor and the LCC uh, members for giving me this opportunity uh, to share God's word. Uh, the topic that I've chosen for today is uh, called Entangled. So, why this topic? Uh, many of you may ask, and uh, it actually came, and when I was thinking about what topic to discuss, uh, a few weeks back, uh, when I was talking to one of our Sunday school uh, kids, uh, the volunteer who was helping out also said that he also had uh, such questions. Uh, and a lot of youth members will also have a lot of questions, especially when it comes to uh, various aspects of life. So I uh, thought I will uh, quickly touch upon a few things and on what we get entangled into and uh, how, what the Bible says on how we can get out of it. So, uh, next slide. Yeah, so as you can see, uh, by definition, uh, entangle is nothing but to involve in a perplexing or troublesome situation. And uh, when will we get into that situation? Uh, typically, it's a decision that we make. Uh, sometimes the decision will be good, everything will be fine, but sometimes uh, the decision may be bad and we'll end up like uh, Spike uh, here from the Tom and Jerry cartoon where he's all uh, tangled up, uh, entangled in different scenarios. So, so quickly wanted to uh, share some uh, real life scenarios. Uh, so three uh, main scenarios that uh, I thought we'll discuss today is uh, entanglement in addiction, entanglement of greed and death, and entanglement in immorality. So ad addiction, right? The definition again uh, is a strong inclination to do, use, or indulge in something repeatedly. So what, so in addiction can be anything. It can be addiction to uh, smoking or drinking. Those are typically what uh, we have all heard uh, over the course of our lives. But now the latest trend is uh, addiction to, say, mobile phones, addiction to social media, uh, addiction to Netflix, addiction to series. So there are so many things that we can get addicted into. All right? But the main thing here is given in 1 John 2.16, uh, which says, for everything in the world, the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. And if I look at it from the ESV version, it says the desires of the flesh, desires of the eyes, and pride in possession comes from the world and not from God. God has given us the freedom to choose. Uh, he has given us the right to choose. He will not get, he will not involve you or making a decision for you. The choice is us to make. And in uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 12, uh, if you turn your Bibles, you can see where Paul says, I have the right to do anything, you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. So what Paul is trying to say over here is, you will have the right to do anything. So the choice is yours. But don't, but again, when you get into an addiction, it will become the master of you, right? And you'll have to somehow try to come out of it, or you'll try hard to come out of it, but it keeps dragging you back. So how do you come out of it? How do you come out of an addiction? The addiction that is, uh, plaguing your life. It can be any scenario, like we said, right? James 4, 7 clearly says, submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil, therefore, resist the devil and he will flee from you, all right? So while we submit and resist the devil, the devil is also strong. So where do we get the strength from? It's there in Philippians 4, 13, which says, I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. So God will give you the strength when you submit. And any of these addictions, anything will be uh, 
taken away when you submit to the Lord. Moving on is uh, the entanglement of debt. So, over the course of my uh, shortened life or the life which I had so far, I've seen various scenarios, especially at work, where uh, I get calls or help from my friends requesting for some money or, and uh, sometimes, and even during the course of the day, right, we'll get at least one or two phone calls uh, saying that, uh, sir, you have a personal loan, you have interest-free personal loan. So the whole world is designed in such a way that they want you to spend more than what you can afford. And that sometimes will, that greed sometimes will get you into debt. And, and sometimes it is also very, very difficult to come out of because you get entangled, especially when there are scenarios when you have taken loans beyond what you can repay. And that just eats your mind out, which then sometimes leads to uh, suicides. So while it is important for us to make decisions in terms of uh, making, uh, supplying for the needs of the family, right? Uh, we should look to the Lord again, as mentioned in Philippians 4, 19, which says, the Lord shall supply all your needs. And sometimes it is also important as individuals, especially when we take loans or take credit cards, we are also putting our families in risk because we do not know how our life is going to be on this earth. We can be called at any time, but then if you go and you have a debt, it then falls on the family as well, and then they'll have to bear the brunt of it, right? So that is clearly shown in the example of uh, Second Kings chapter 4, verses 1 to 7, where there was this widowed uh, lady with two sons where the husband had a lot of debt. So he then went, she then went to Elisha, and Elisha, through God, uh, prayed and asked her, okay, what do you have? And she said, I have just a jar of oil. So he said, uh, okay, bring it, go to your neighbors, bring some more jars, and then that jar in, at home was filled, and she was able to fill up the oil and then sell it and was able to close the debt. So, the Lord will supply all your needs, is what I can say from this. So whatever difficulties you have, whatever situation you are in, submit it to the Lord, and the Lord will provide for all your needs. The next topic is uh, something which uh, I was thinking of whether to talk or not, but given the modern day scenario, I felt it is a need for me to address this to especially the youth of uh, the church. Uh, immorality, especially the latest trend uh, which is going in is say, uh, is uh, live-in relationship or extramarital affairs. So marriage uh, is a sacred union of a man and a woman taken under oath in the presence of God that displays Christ's love for the church. As youth, as individuals, you will be questioned a lot, or especially being a Christian, you will get questioned on this, right? Especially with the latest trend going around, right? This is very important. Marriage is a sacred union of a man and a woman. When you turn to the Bible on this, you can look at Ephesians chapter 5, verses 21 to 33 which talks about the institution of marriage. 1 Corinthians 7 talks about the principles of marriage. When you read these chapters, you can clearly see that both a live-in relationship and extramarital affairs clearly violate what God has told you, especially in the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not commit adultery. And what happens when you violate these laws is given in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10, which clearly says people committing adultery and a list of other things will not inherit the kingdom of God, right? And it is clearly given in this chapter, in this 
verse. So in, in any question, in any time when youth as youth you are challenged, quote this verse saying that this is given in the Bible, right? Which is what it is. So this is what the Lord was telling me to share on these things. But let's look at some biblical examples on some of these entanglements that people have faced. Uh, I will talk about three uh, characters in the Bible. The first one is Jacob. Jacob, as all of you know, has given in Genesis chapter 27 and 29. So Jacob was a deceiver. He deceived his brother Esau. And the decision he took made him run from Esau and he kept running and running. But God, but then also what he did, he also got back when Laban deceived him. When Jacob wanted to marry Rachel, he went and approached Laban. Laban said, okay, you be a slave. And then you know the story. He then had to marry Leah. And then again, he had to wait and work through and work and get married to Rachel. So that is uh, what, it, what happened to Jacob. When, so the action he took had a consequence. Similarly, Ananias and Sapphira in Acts. So here again, it was clear when the disciples said, uh, give all your possessions, whatever you have, sell it and give it to the church. The greed in Ananias and Sapphira made them keep a portion of what they had sold. And uh, Peter, through the Holy Spirit, when questioned, uh, and Ananias and Sapphira, when they answered that they had kept and they lied, they immediately perished. So uh, that is what happens when uh, this, again, they had to face a consequence for their actions. The last character that I will talk about is uh, uh, David and Bathsheba. All of you know David was a man after God's own heart. Probably the, one of the biggest blemishes or biggest thing that he did was when he went into a relationship with uh, Bathsheba. And then in order to make it right, he sent Bathsheba's uh, husband to war and got him killed. And then got Bathsheba as his wife. But again, if you look closely, what he did was displeasing to God. God forgave David, but killed that child which was of that relationship. So in all these three examples, you can see that the action, the decision that you took will have a consequence, but it will also be that when we ask the Lord for forgiveness, He will forgive you as well. So in conclusion, I wanted to... Uh, show you a quick uh, thing on how we can get out of these entanglements. The first one is this word called guidance. And this is something I uh, read on the internet way back in uh, 2004, and it struck me. So if you split the word, G, U, I, and dance, it is God, you, and I dance. So what this is, so when there is dancing, right, you can't have uh, two people just dance in random. You will, they will be all distorted, you will not have a synchronous flow. But when one person takes the lead and the other person follows, there will be a beautiful synchronization of the steps. Similarly, when we ask God for guidance and we ask God to lead you, uh, previously, when you ask God to lead you, uh, you will be in sync with Him and you will have a smooth and transition step, smooth steps as you go along. And the next one is an air traffic control tower. So as a pilot, uh, if you had observed, and if you have gone on an aeroplane, uh, you would know that there are no roads for the pilots to see, or they can't see incoming traffic, or anything of that sort. They are always dependent on the control tower, where uh, they need to ask for each and every step, whether there's an aircraft coming, whether they should increase the altitude, decrease the altitude, or if the runway is clear. They're dependent on the word of the traffic uh, on the control tower and they trust anything that the control tower says. Similarly, imagine God to be the control tower of our lives and we are flying the aeroplane of life. Each and everything that God says, we have to just blindly trust and proceed. 
So how does this tie to our entanglement uh, scenario? When you look at Hebrews chapter 4, verses 15 and 16, which was read to us, it says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Jesus has seen it all. Jesus was in this earth as a human. He has faced every sort of temptation that can possibly come, but yet he was there without sin. So similarly, we can go to God, Jesus for guidance for any of the entanglements that we have. Whatever it is that is displeasing in the eyes of God, ask God, Jesus, for his guidance and the Holy Spirit along with will guide you so that we will be doing things that are pleasing in the sight of God. Shall we pray? Father, we come before you, O Lord. Hearing your word on how we can avoid these entanglements, O Lord, in our lives. We pray, O Lord, that you will guide us in every single step that we take. May you, O Lord, be the source. May we do everything that is pleasing in your sight so that we'll be able to inherit your kingdom. We ask this all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.